What's up, everybody? It's me, RDV, back here again with Geek Easy and Eric bringing on a special Wednesday night edition of the best comic books of the week. We'll be back to our normal Thursday schedule next week. Uh, so with that being said, Zach will show up in about 30 minutes or an hour, whenever he decides to show up when he can. He's unpredictable. He's <laughs> All right. Uh, start with my books here. And hello to Geek Easy in the chat. Thanks for watching. All right, number ten for this week. Uh, it is uh, ten to twelve of the, uh, of the Expanse continuation. Okay, issue. Just above average, not the best. Uh, this is my first experience with uh, reading a series by Andy Diggle. So uh, I was told that he's hit or miss, or just miss sometimes. Uh, honestly, I, I've been enjoying it. It's just that I have to go back and reread these again because I'm kind of, I'm kind of not. I know what's going on, but I don't know what's going on at the same time too because it kind of I have to go back and reread everything. But um, yeah. Uh, so, that being said, it's up to Zach Roman saying I miss you and I good luck in life. Well, thank you for the good wishes on good luck in life, but uh, missing me, I've never, never. I think we've met before. The scope was off a little bit. Is probably that's, what, that's to what I was thinking. That was the other thing I was thinking. Is like the scope is off. All right, but uh, that is, uh, he is uh, watching us over on Twitch or he or she or wherever your preferred pronoun is. Uh, we yeah, so we do stream over on Twitch occasionally, but our main uh, source of where we have upload everything and stream is on YouTube. So I ask you to subscribe here if you want to see more of our backlog, since Twitch doesn't really keep a backlog. But but yeah, this is my number ten. Decent art. I mean, it just captured the uh, the characters, their likenesses pretty well. Uh, I mean, it helps if you actually watch the show. And at least within the last couple months, because hearing the characters' voices, like you hear, like, when I read Batman, I hear Ken Conway's voice. When I've been reading this, I hear the actual voice, the, vo the actors, you know, I hear their voices when I read this. And it actually helps me uh, uh, enjoy the book more. But, but, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Zach, we're actually count, I'm counting down from my least favorite to favorite this week. I only have 10 books this week. You'll find out. All right. Number nine for this week. Van Helsing. Vampire Hunter. Uh, this has been a fun book. I I normally don't read the, the Xenoscope Van Helsing books. It's never really got into them. It's more of the Belle, more of the Robin Hood. Uh, this has been kind of cool. Uh, her, It's basically going against an underground city full of vampires. Uh, where the uh, vampires enslave the humans, and she basically uh, has to uh, try and stop their doomsday plan. Of um, because uh, they're gonna, they basically want to walk. They basically want to cause uh, explosion that will block out the sun for a while, so they can walk, you know, on on the surface, you know, and uh, eternal nights. But uh, decent art in here. Um, like I said. One of the things that Xenoscope is really good is that <coughs> they understand what people want, especially uh, catering to guys and girls that like girls. You know, they uh, there's none of this where like we're gonna, you're gonna like oh avoid the male gaze. We can't do this. You know, we gotta check the uh, diversity boxes and all that stuff. You know, it's been written pretty well. Oh, you know. There's actually women in here that are friends. They're not girlfriends, like, you know, the lovers. They are actually are two girls, and they are platonic friends. So, and the Xenoscope has a lot of that. So, it's kind of refreshing. But uh, it's just, it's, a, it's the final issue of this story. <laughs> of course, I, this is what I had, cover B. And uh, two big reasons why most people like this book, probably. Because the font. Right there. Van Helsing, the name right there. See? Nothing else. But good book. 
All right. For my number eight this week, I went with uh, for Red Sonia. This is uh, issue number, uh, I believe, nine. Yeah, it is nine. One with the Gracie cosplay cover. Gracie's were pretty, pretty cool. Uh, check her over on uh, Twitter and Instagram. There's a lot of cosplays. Yeah, I saw this other cover, which was a uh, yeah, pretty nice. It was from the south angle. The Alicia Perot covers have just kind of been kind of mid for me lately. They haven't really been feeling them. Um, so I do like this book. Is uh, the they get Walter Giovanni back in the art? Uh, we've got the Wild Hunt versus Red Sonia. And she's also trying to d- d- take down uh, Kulan Gath, who has been re- recently resurrected and is going around killing other so- uh, sorcerers to steal their magical abilities or powers while she's trying to protect this girl. Um, yeah, it's like I said, uh, Torn Kronbeck is uh, is the writer on this, a Nor- Norwegian writer, and uh, she's actually been doing pretty well in this. It's nice to see Red Sonja back to being Red Sonja before Gail Simone ruined her. So if you were a fan of Red Sonia, kind of like this, it's almost like the Marvel Red Sonia in a sense. What I've been reading, kind of getting that same kind of like vibe. So people getting possessed by this red mist, you know, uh, that uh, basically that Kulan Gath, the basically, you don't take out this army that was invading his ta- castle, took over. He's just set up this like this magical spell and just turns everybody into this raging uh, frenzy and murder frenzy, just kill each other. So, like I said, if you are looking for uh, actually strong female uh, warriors that are, and you actually get more than just TNA, you actually get um, where they actually compelling stories, good stories. But you also get the good art too. And uh, yeah, you're not being preached to. She's just going around doing what she's doing. She's killing bad guys. Simplistic to it. Alrighty. Uh, my numbers, I believe, yeah, number seven for this week. Ghostbusters back in town through Dark Horse. This is, uh, takes place between Ghostbusters Afterlife and the new the new movie Frozen Empire. And I gotta say, the great art is on the cover. The interior art is bad. It's very cartoonish. Like it's a like it's a young age. It should be like the the artist should be working on young adult books, you know, kids books instead of being on a Ghostbusters franchise book. Because Ghostbusters isn't really made for like little kids. More, more for like teenagers, adults. Um, overall, it's nice to actually have a Ghostbusters story, or, or at least comic book. It's been five years since IDW basically lost the rights back in 2019 um, after their 30th anniversary, and it's like, like I said, the the writer is uh, David M. Booher, and the art is by Blue De Delaquanti. Not the best art, but. Honestly, it actually felt kind of good to read the Ghostbusters book. And I i mean, maybe I'm a little biased because I'm a Ghost, huge Ghostbusters fan when it comes like this. The spinoff series, the cartoons, and all that stuff. Uh, but I can look past the art because the story was actually pretty decent. And it's setting, and setting up nicely. So if you have seen Frozen uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife and also seen Frozen Empire, you kind of know what's going on in the attic as far as like there's certain they give away certain things. You kind of, you kind of, but if you haven't seen Frozen Empire, I'm not sure if this is going to spoil it. I haven't seen any spoilers yet, you know. But I mean, uh, it does set up things nicely, which are going to happen in the movie. But there, there is a new uh, ghost that, have, that appears in here too. We get to see more of characters that we that were kind of like overshadowed in, in the in the movie. We get to see more of uh, Ernie uh, uh, Hudson's character, also uh, more of the Gruber family settling into the uh, the firehouse. Also, the first ghost they have to go uh, go against that's inside the actual fire. Is that Paul Rudd? So it's supposed yeah. to be Paul Rudd. Jeez. I know. It's cartoon art. Um, but they capture, like I said, the writer captures the personality of the characters. And that's one thing I've always said about the Ghostbusters books. They actually do capture the personalities or at least improve on them sometimes. That was the 2016 Ghostbusters by Kelly Thompson. She basically took uh, and answered the call. We had the they had the, the movie Ghostbusters from uh, meeting the actual uh, female Ghostbusters in 2016, and it was just done phenomenally well. So, um, I would imagine just like Hasbro, they want like the uh, Sony 
once their uh, property is done with respect. None of this uh, pushing your own personal crap into it. Should have asked for better art. That's the only thing I can ask for. Otherwise, that it's like I said, it's a four star book for me. <coughs> and how much was that? This was the price of a normal book. It's just uh, three ninety nine. Hmm. Mainly cut. I probably if it wasn't the IP, it'd probably be two ninety nine. Maybe. Who knows? But like I said, I, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. Number six for this week is Pharaoh. Uh, Tony Fleeks, the creator of, of uh, Stray Cats. Or sorry, sorry Grey Dog, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is kind of like what we described it on top five. Me and Zach were talking about it. This is three house cats that they basically uh, end up being stranded in the middle of the woods. All the animals have rabies. And they're trying to get home. The main, uh, the main cat in here is uh, she's kind of annoying. She, she, the, the two cats, you know, at the, the car, basically, uh, because this fox goes in the middle of the road on this turn, they're inside the back of a pound vehicle and it crashes and pretty much everyone died except for the animals. I mean, it is, it's exceptionally beautiful art. This is, uh, Trisha Forst, uh, Forstner and, uh, I forgot the, Rodriguez is, is the last name. And it looks like it's a tribute to, he also tribute to, uh, Rodriguez's, uh, wife. At the, at the end of this, but um, like you said, cartoonish art, they like Disney cartoon art, uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah, I don't get away too much, but um, but uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of lot of a lot of violence in here too, uh, and uh, it just felt really short there. That's my only knock on this book. It felt short, like and it's only I think it's like twenty, it's twenty eight pages, but. Man, does it go by really fast? Because there isn't that much dialogue. Really, there is, but not a lot. It's kind of like Walking Dead dialogue. But in the back here, yeah, there's a see, there's a tribute. Yeah, and then the cats. It's based off of them. yeah. So, so uh, definitely check this out. There is a bunch of different variants that are based off of, like zombie stuff, outbreak stuff. So if you don't like one, there's a, there's a there's about forty to choose from. <laughs> you could definitely will find one you like. Yeah, and this actually my first solo Tony Fleeks books, where he's just doing the writing. Um, because uh he yeah because I've been following Local Man where he does some writing on there and Tim Seeley does the writing too. They take 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 turns doing art. Because he's a flip, two story flip book. Number five for this week is Conan the Barbarian, issue nine. This is kind of been really great. I've been liking this Conan the Barbarian. There's a surprise, um, a character that pops in here, appears in here towards the end that adds, actually Conan actually fights because in this issue Conan goes back in time after being struck or killing himself with the with the pitch sword or the or the, the last issue he winds up. Back in time and uh, meet some interesting people. Oh, I said I just love the art here. I mean, this is what a comic book should be. If you're drawing a character, like you know, you should have really decent art. And I love how they time a true tree. He waits to the this little panther or, or, or mountain lion to come at him, and he uses it so it, it basically ends up cutting him free. And then he uses the ropes to, like strangle it. <laughs> Uh, so if you like, so if you like uh, Conan the Barbarian stuff or just Warlord stuff, you know, fantasy medieval, this is the book you should be getting. And it's Jim Zub, who was working over at Marvel, working running uh, Conan the Barbarian ti uh, title, and they sucked. But as Zach and I pointed out here on the channel, when it comes to Titan, his series in here, he's not doing the same shit he was doing at Marvel. He doesn't have that pressure to do that stuff. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe. He's told that here at Titan, you can't do that shit. You know, we won't, we don't, we don't like that shit. You know, so I don't know. It could be Marvel's pressure to do it, or, or her Marvel let him do it. We'll never know. But look at this art. It's just breathtaking. I love it. Yeah, he ends up in the town of uh, Valencia, 
there is another clue. That who's, who's appearing in this? Because this time, what's that? Was it, it, it was probably tough for Jim Zub to write a Conan book where Conan had to be subservient to whatever strong female character was in the book with him. That's mm -hmm. not what Conan's about. Conan is yeah. a barbarian James Bond. So, so mm. this is this is kind of cool. I I, I I literally popped for this. This is in the book, King Call. Hmm. So, uh, getting to see another character like that. And, of course, what you do when you have two formidable poles, they just fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's just an all-out brawl. Knuckle and Dragon, like, you know, it's just, like, it's just awesome back and forth. Uh, looking forward to the next issue, issue 10. Furious is going on because now Conan's trapped in the past after he thought he was dead, but he learns he's in the past because he recognizes his characters and he's like, you're supposed to be dead. But uh, uh, so, so characters he killed are in the future are alive and he's coming across them. And like I said, it's just been fun. I, I just want more of this. And like I said, you also get Savage Corner Conan books magazine. That's been, that's been, they're going to do another one. Uh, I believe in April. Issue two. Like I said, it is just. Then you get the course, all the exposition, the background. So, it's like they get they 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 figured out. Hey, if we just take the actual source material and adapt it, put a picture to it, it's actually then it actually works. It actually sells, right? <clears throat> you know, if only DC could do that with the Batman animated series or the Superman animated series, adapt that into an actual. You know, book. You have to understand. Or, there, you have to play by the new rules of comics at the big two. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I, I said Conan wasn't allowed to be Conan. Yep. Like I said, I love the fact this whole entire book advertises only Conan, nothing else. That's cool too. Like you like Conan? Well, we have other Conan stuff here because we have the rights, and they're like they're gonna look at like you're in the very beginning. Look the first page. This is other stuff you can be buying right now. So, I love the fact it's it's kind of it's kind of loosely connected to the Marvel, Conan stuff, from back in the the eighties and seventies. So, having fun with this book. Number four for this week. It's local, local man, bad girls. Uh, it's kind of a little filler gap in between you know, before we get to issue uh, ten. Which will be coming out. We're going to preview here in uh, May. Or sorry, yeah. Uh, basically, if you've been following this story, um, you have Neon, and uh, who basically is uh, one of the one of the girls that was on the team that was with uh, Crossjack. Did he Crossjack? You know, her husband was Camo, who Crossjack actually kills in this book. Or not this book, but um, early in the series. And she's upset because the person uh, responsible for that is Igna. Igna, who causes all mess and was doing all these back deals, use uh, basically selfish deals and stuff. And we get a kind of a, uh, an origin story for uh, for um, for Neon. So that was really really cool. But also this, I don't know, if this is a callback. Do you remember a character called the Sixth? In, any, in anything like Image Wildstorm? Green. No, because apparently, well, this, in this story, the, the, this character is Val. She developed a, a bomb that basically erased men or took them off and took them off the planet into. A, and they found out they weren't dead, but they were actually on a different dimension. So all these different heroes, and you know, switch blades in there. No. Oh. So. I'm, Jay White. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, witch blade! I think it's switch blade. Yeah, I know. Which blade? And then there's Cyclone, I think it is, in the back there. The green, the redhead, on the left. Uh, I can't remember what her name is. Max? That's not, yeah, but uh, of course, because this is Team Sealy. And I kind of rolled my eyes, but it was that. And you see, yeah, there is some nudity in here, too. Some girls going on. So. But, uh, yeah, like I said. 
the the bad the the, the, the story was that the bad girl got her just desserts. The one of the one of the <clears throat> uh, heroes basically when basically filled her organs with water, the point where she drowned and you know ugh, it's gross. But it looks like we have might have Fathom. I think I'm not sure that's Fathom, but so I guess Ballist, Ballistic is a lesbian now. I don't know who Ballistic. I think is. that's the girl with the bionic arm that was in you know, oh. the bubble bath with that other toots. Yeah. Uh, Ballistic was Ballistic was the. Uh... Yeah, I think she was in Cyberforce, wasn't she? Or... Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't gay. But nope. that's that, that that was that wasn't current year. Nope. No, like I said, I just been having I just been having fun with this book. I mean that was the only thing kind of rolled my eyes at the girls and fans was like, because there's no like guys, they're like, okay, she's bi, whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. I don't really know the character, so I'm not really attached to it. But it, uh it is but um the cool thing about this, <coughs> at the end of this, they give you these really cool pinups at the end of here. These are really cool. So, um, yeah. Sort of reminds me of like Bond type posters. I mean,. I'm kind of shocked they actually uh, had pinups like that in the book or two, but it, like here's you know, the end. Here's another one in here. But then they gave you like a synopsis, you know, like you know, uh, or just like uh, telling you who's who, the who they are, you know, so you know information about them, including the the villain at the end too. So. Like I said, it's a nice little filler issue. If this was uh, five bucks for an oversized issue, so. But yeah, that's that is my number four for this week. My number three is a book that um kind of shocked me because I originally was gonna get it, but then I then I looked more about who the writer is, and I've read something by him before that he actually wrote the X Men before too on this, and this is the Steve Fox books, X Men ninety seven. And I, I'm I'm generally shocked. There was nothing in here that was triggering or like, or anything that was uh, narrative pushing on here as far as self insert. Uh, literally, it, it 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 correlates with the actual cartoon. What's going on in the cartoon right now? This is supposed to be a prequel. So Marvel already dropped the ball by having a prequel story coming out when the third episode drops. So, so it didn't have any agenda, but was it legitimately good? I, I enjoyed it. All right, um, it's good enough. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> X Men Night, uh, X basically, do you remember X Men '92 when they did that, the Hox Pox thing, when they basically took the all the storylines that Marvel did and put them into like what they were, if it was done in the animated series, and it legitimately made all those events so much better. Even Zach and I both were reeling it. This is 2022 uh, when it came out, but like I said, uh, I just legitimately all of this, I just had fun with this, man. It was it was so refreshing. There was no oh uh, I I'm uh, in love with you know I like you know another girl. There was nothing about morph saying I love I uh, having a boyfriend. None of that none of that crap. Uh, they even got dazzling here because it takes place after the Professor Xavier's death, and they're gonna put a concert on in you know, like a memorial concert, you know. And Dazzler is supposed to be there, and Dazzler ends up getting kidnapped. So the, the X-Men has to go in and help rescue her. Um, just overall, I just had fun with this, you know. Um, of course, you guys recognize this, you know. That was part of the thing we're advertising. And, the re and she says the reason, uh, Storm says the reason she's dressed because she's going to attend the concert at night. And that's kind of supposed to be like the hip punk rock, I guess. Which I don't really understand that too, but that's the duds. They, they, people would wear the shoulder pads and stuff. I don't know. But uh, over pads were all more eighties than yeah yeah 90s. yeah I know. But overall, just had fun, you know. You know, uh, it's and because it gets. If you haven't seen the show, this will be kind of a spoiler because it, it touches on what's going to happen in the show. Uh, Gene wants to tell Scott something, but of course Scott is so uh, as he naturally would be, like you know, back in the when the Professor Xavier died, 
he's so wrapped up in, in carrying on the mission and and uh, and being a leader and all that stuff. He's got the weight on his shoulder. He kind of ignores Jean towards the end there, and then you know, so they kind of look. She doesn't like. Oh, I hate you, Scott. I'll, I'll, in fact, they actually do talk later on, and they do kind of like and she reveals uh, what's going on. But what's really cool about this is they brought on. Um, what are they called here? Uh, the Nasty Boys here and here, which is typically in the cartoon series. The Nasty Boys show up. They work for Sinister. I thought you meant the wrestlers at first. <laughs> no. I, thought they, I thought they worked for Hulk Hogan. Yeah. So Sinister pretty much it hates the fact that they kind of like interfered with his plans. And uh, yeah, it's kind of he's Sinister is the big bad guy, which is spoilers for anybody who's watched the cartoon because he's in the cartoon as well. At least for when I prefer the most recent episode. But I'm just looking for this. And he, he has a new team in mind. So I thought that's kind of cool. Oh, that's right. That came out today, didn't it? The cartoon. Yep. So I'm I'm looking forward to this. The cartoon has been fun. And yeah. Get a preview for next issue. And MK, yes, uh, your deductions uh, are astute. Even I did not know that I shaved my mustache. But like I said, very, very fun book. Number two for the week is, and then this is my story, I get some hate probably, is Ultimate Spider Man. Uh, is it my number two? Had a lot of fun with this. Um, Breen, I hope you're still reading this. At least you're going to try more past issue two yeah uh just had a lot of fun with this peter and his daughter bonding on that mj and like the like the his son richard kind of like questioning what they're up to um of course we learned last last you know that peter's suit is kind of like a nanotech or something like or, or a symbiote kind of like he can change it so I love how they're like they're shopping as far as like what colors we should do. Do we try this or this? And these are companies are callbacks to different suits he's had as well. Um, and I, I said, and his daughter helps them settle on the last one here, and like suddenly so they just have fun. It's like that right there is is so much more refreshing. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna review what happens at the end, but we get the classic Spider Man stuff where he's on a stakeout, and he realizes. Well, this is why people just eat because they're so freaking bored waiting for something to happen. Until something finally does. And there's, of course, you get the bullseye and the green goblin. And uh, that's as far as I'm going to go on that as far as review. Um, if you want a more in-depth review, let me know. But so, something does happen towards the end, something that's different and new. And I'm curious to see what's going to go with that. And maybe Zach will probably talk about it more or Breen if he wants to talk about it. So you're saying something Marvel has something all new and all different? We know how that worked out the last time. Um yeah. No. Uh this is actually is something that is all new and all different, where the other one is just the same shit over and over again, calling it that title. No. This is actually going back to uh classic Marvel. Said when they actually have the house ideas, the house ideas, and they actually have a guy who allowed them to do his ideas. So I'm looking forward to this, especially the second issue, man. This has been fun. All right. Number one book is Duke. Stiffy is funny. <clears throat> his lips is CGI. Yes, minor CGI. Actually, I, I, I shaved it off, but it's still there. You can still see it. It never goes away because I have dark hair. Um, yeah, it said J. Joe, as far as this, I'm working together. Um, nine o'clock Eastern, Zach. The the time for you know, like the time that's like universally accepted yeah. as the time. Yeah. No, no, 8 p.m. Central. And so, and so I did last week as well. <clears throat> I, I switched it. Yeah, last week I switched it to 8, eight o'clock because I had stuff to do. I realized I had all this stuff I had to do at night. And tonight as well, I have something at 930. So, so Zach, 
if you've been home this whole entire time and weren't even watching, how dare you? <laughs> you should be checking those notifications, but how dare you? I know. How dare you, sir? Uh, with the, with the cobra attacking the uh, the the pit, basically uh, rock and roll soccer. Uh, 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 what's his crankshaft? I think his name is. I can't remember what his name is. The uh, and uh, Duke and Baroness all work together to go to get um basically to get out of this, and we, and it just gets high octane, much more fun. Uh, living up to it, whatever uh, crankshaft can basically, whatever he can build, Duke's gonna crash, and he does crash later on. So it's it's kind of it's kind of like Rocket and and Star Lord. Rocket builds something, and then Star Lord immediately ruins it. So, but uh, yeah, it's just it's been really have fun with this. And then I, in the back of here, they're teasing uh, a uh, special. Issue trailer or just for the creatures of the of the, of the Black Lagoon lives. I might get this Ram V Dan Waters. Looks like a modern take on the book or the character, at least. We'll see how it goes. But Wait, what company is that? This is through this <clears throat> is through Im- Skybound Image. No, nah, it, it'll be the it'll be the classic because they did the, this did the Dracula series. Yeah, with, yeah. Um, James so, Tinian and um, preview of some of the art. Here, it's gonna be in that that book. It's a decent art. Yeah, I said I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that when it comes out. And yeah, it's. <laughs> well, I said if you didn't get the Dracula one, get the trade. It was very good. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's the one you got uh, the monster thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, very fun book. Recommend it. Um. I'm not a huge GI Joe fan, but like this book is it's been just enough GI Joe, but enough of more disadventure. I, I think the fact that it is it only focuses on a few instead of having like the huge GI Joe that has a, an over stack stack cast. Um, that's probably why I'm liking this more. It's more centric on one character. And the fact he's a fugitive by his own his own side, and now he gets wrapped up with Cobra. They haven't even announced that it, that they were uh, the Mars Corporation was doing stuff, but he simply happened to stumble on it because he's looking for a, a transformer, you know. So all this is a snowball, and I'm like, looking forward to see what's going to happen. All right. And then, had some back issues. First one, I got, I already showed this to Brain. I got this for a dollar, because it's heavily water damaged. Some of the pages stick together, but they came apart. I can still read it, though. And I can't find this anywhere on <laughs> League of Comic Geeks. It doesn't exist. Assassin's Guild. It's because you have to look under Marvel graphic novel. Ah, that's why. But yeah, it's like I said, it's only a dollar. It's it's kind of really. Somebody said it in something that spilled on it in, in an attic or something or basement. It doesn't smell musty though. But uh, like I said, I'm just kind of worried. I'm like peeling the page apart. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I can still I can still open it up and I can still read it though. That's all I care for me. I was like, I don't care, it's a little beat up. Well, I'm sure Jeff can help. He's got a lot of experience with pages being stuck together. <laughs> yes, the yes, this I is do. water. This is not this is not the other substance. Um but yeah. Normally it was a was a yeah, seven dollar trade. So let's see anything book. Uh, the Punisher, the Sa- in, Punisher in the Assassin's Guild by Duffy, Zafino, and Michael. Marvel graphic novel, yeah. But um, actually, no, I looked it up under J- uh, Joe Duffy's name and on the artist's name, George Horry Har- Zafino on League Comic Geeks, and it does. They're not credited with this book whatsoever. This book does not is not on League Comic Geeks. So whoever does the database is has she really dropped the ball. But I love in the back it gives you a little brief. Those are hard to find when I've when I've been pricing graphic novels. Like they're you can find them, but they're not numbered, so you just kinda of have to go check each one so you stumble onto the one that's the right one. Yeah. Like I said, I'm always happy to get these old school graphics ones. Most people are like, eh, I had them ready, they're gonna, you know, get rid of them. But 
that's cool for me. I like I said, I just seeing old school Punisher. Um, yeah, Marvel Entertainment Group. Yeah. It's got that, and then I got some other back issues. I was going through, and I and, uh, was going through the dollar bin, and I came across one of the booster golds that I need. <laughs> so I need issue nine. I just need issue eight now. To complete my run. Nice. So, yeah. And then uh, came across some showcases. Showcase 94. And showcase 95. And then I got some more Miss Marvel from the 2006 series. So number four, and then number 21. You're never going to see these again. No, you're not. <laughs> fact, if Marvel could recall them, they would. That that looks like a Wally Wood attempt. Yeah, and I like how they put that sticker right over one of the good parts. This the leg. <clears throat> well, you can always take it out of the bag. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, too. They put their own sticker, and then they put this. This is kind of helpful, though, for people who are looking for a certain series. Yeah. Because they put them in the same thing. They put under Miss Marvel. Yeah, I wasn't complaining stuff. about the 2006 thing. I was just kind of making a snide comment about where it was placed. Mm hmm And then the last thing I got um, is... Super Mario Brothers. Manga. So, through Viz. This collection of uh, basically the best, you know, a lot, a lot of Super Mario Bros. manga stuff collection. This was actually kind of cool. Um, there, there's only like, what was it? 12 bucks, but yeah. Features full stories based on the hit Super Mario games. So if you're a Mario fan, so it's kind of cool. I'm going to read this later on. And, uh, yeah, that's it for me for this week. So if I'm Mr. Geek Easy, if you're all right, I will, I will sit here to eat my Milky Way while I wait for you. All right, then. Did you see uh, about Justin Trudeau today? Uh, no. He eats Milky Ways upside down so he can feel the veins on his tongue. What? Yeah. I thought we all do that, right? I, I saw that again. Remember way, way back when bats and stacks would always take cheap shots at Milky Way? And I was, yeah, I, I, oddly enough, I just bought some Milky Way ice cream bars today. Ooh, nice. I don't know if I can eat them now, knowing that just that's that's just creepy. Well, he's just, I don't creepy. want to have any of the same likes as Justin today. I don't care if he sucks dicks or, or eats poop. I don't care. It's him. What he wants to do. I. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. Obviously, I'm kidding. But it's yeah. You know, it was. Well, funny. no. It's funny that there are people who are who actually will not do some because because they got some stupid like that. Nah, can't blame them. Zach is sitting in traffic. There's a car wreck on, on my ride home. Well, maybe you should get in your car and drive. So it's sitting in the traffic. Yes. You know, get get. Drive one of those monster trucks. It can just go like right over the the accidents and stuff. Make sure you don't take the bridge home. Yeah. Uh, I have six. I spent a bunch of time dealing with the VA today, so I only got to read one of them. It's amazing how they will, you have to argue with them to allow them to release your own medical records. It's like it's mine. Release it. Uh, but anyway, so this is in no particular order. La Muerta, number one. I really did get that. I almost got it, but I realized it's like chapter nine. Yeah, I didn't realize it until after um, after I got it home. Like all Coffin comic books by Brian Plato, you have to basically go and buy them from the beginning. They're all one continuing thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize it until I... I was more... Uh, Paying more attention to something else than I was the fact that it was number nine. I did check the art inside, though. It's pretty good. 
I, yeah, it's just a good art. It's just that I don't know if they're going to tell me who the character is, or if they have to, they have to go read back issues to figure out. You you sort of they do go uh, do some a little bit of time. Well, from what, from what I've read Recap? so far, yeah, they they make references to things in the back that you, you sort of get filled in a, a tad bit. That's good. A tad, but uh, okay. Number two, like I said, not in particular any particular order. Sam and Twitch. This is a good book. Uh, and next is Newburn. Sixteen. Oh, you know who these are, don't you, there, Vicman? I only know of uh, Sam the Bunny and Max cartoon nineties. <laughs> no, these guys. <laughs> these guys are cops in, from the Spawn universe, and I guess they. Uh, they know who Spawn is. They know about Spawn. And it's actually written by Todd McFarlane. Oh, no. Oh, it's written by Todd McFarlane? Oh, good luck. Oh, <laughs> oh it, it, the art is really good. Well, yeah. That's 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 like all McFarlane books. The art's great, but the story sucks because he can't write. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's like if I read a book that's uh, by Rob Liefeld, I just come to assume they know I'm just not going to see any feet in the book. <laughs> and have the have the chest bigger than Dolly Parton's. The guns are bigger than the chest. And next would be Ultimate Spider-Man number three, which I have not read yet. Uh, next is the Ultimate I mean, The Incredible Hulk number 10. This has been a really good series. Some would say it's been incredible. Yes. The art is lacking a bit in this. Yeah, always. I mean, it's just sort of not the best. I hear people praising the book, but I mean, I just, yeah. it's, if it's Al Ewing, I just kind of avoid this is uh, not Al Ewing. Who is it? Al Ewing's over at DC now. Oh, is it Phil Kennedy? Yeah, that's the other one I avoid. It's uh, <laughs> Philip Kennedy Johnson. I, I, I uh, slugged my way through his uh, James Bond book towards the end. But, I mean, it, it was like the art was horrendous, but his art was like somewhat decent, so I could at least get, get understand what's going on. But, uh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe he's better at Mar Marvel. I have nothing to compare it to, so actually comics was he's right if you read that he was reading those for or he's writing those for a while. The what? He was writing actually comics back oh. uh last year. And the last one, which I have not finished read yet either. Jill and the Killers number three. This has been a good series so far. And then I picked this up. Uh Ooh, Marvel nice. must haves. It should be a really short book, but you know, Marvel because, previous, yeah, the previous. <laughs> yeah, must haves. There's shouldn't be maybe two books in there. That's a three Mar Moon Knight Hulk, and, and uh, I, I can't wait to May where they show me all the. There's like probably like, like forty different like uh, just free comic book day books I've been seeing appearing on on Link Comic Geeks, and. Um, I just can't even imagine this whole uh, vampire thing that they have going. I I'll read the main books. That's what I did with a lot of the books. Or Civil War. I didn't read the tie-ins. I had no interest yeah. in them. Yeah. Same with Secret Invasion. And so yesterday, I'm I'm one of those people that go in on Tuesdays for DC, and they didn't have anything I wanted because I finally did drop Detective. See, I dropped another book. I dropped Green Arrow. Ah, yes, that was out as well. Oh, that's but, uh, out. Uh, but I did go check some back issues, and I got Batman Confidential number one. Okay. Two. But you can't talk about those, though. And three, what? You can't talk, you can't talk about them, though. Why? Because they're confidential. Oh, yes. Duh. <laughs> Boy, that was really swift for me. Uh, they were really good, and the art was pretty good. But what really kind of made me mad was, and I didn't know this, 
it was a four part series. I went in today and went looking for number four. It's gone. And it wasn't there. It said jump from three to eight. So I wasn't going to read eight and not know what the hell was going on. So I have to wait at some point. And uh, Have you read any of the other Batman Confidentials? No. There's a five-part story with Catwoman and Batgirl. Then the Kevin McGuire does the art. I saw. I think I saw some of those in there. Cause it's it's fun. I saw like one of them was sort of Batgirl falling off something on the cover. And she's like she's like naked for an entire issue. Really? I'm gonna have to go naked. Uh, naked. Oh just just completely her boots. naked. Well, Na- yeah. naked. She just shows her 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 neck is exposed. That's right. Yeah, that's kind of erotic. Oh yeah. The, the DC would never do that story today. No. No. But. You get to, oh, this probably previous. Uh, this is probably before shooting, so it wouldn't have the bullet holes in her or the scars. But, but that's it for me. I've got uh, all right. That's all I got, Eric. I don't have. I just have the two books, and we already talked about them. Oh, I was just gonna say, get the tables. <laughs> and that, uh, yeah, I Van Helsing was was nice, uh, and. Ultimate Spider-Man, I thought it was really good. I, I started, yeah, as I was going through, it was like, yeah, okay, um, yeah, is Spider-Man going to do anything? And then when he did, and I, I liked the end. It's, again, another another interesting, you know, I'm not twisting the right word, but I'm really, I mean, he, enjoy, I'm really fought, enjoying them. I like it. He fought the bad guy, spent a time with his daughter. He got an inter- interaction with MJ. We get his interaction also with... Uh, uh, Jonah and uh, and uh, and Ben, and then he learned about their kind of their connection board with the, the crime stuff, Kingpin and all that stuff. The Green Goblin, as as uh, 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 Joe Robertson dubbed it, the Green Goblin, because Joe's still there. So yep. I, was, uh, I wish you could see more Joe though. Hope he's involved. But um, yeah, I mean, looks like Peter's gonna be their photographer working with them. Yeah. So Zach, it's okay. You haven't gotten to read anything. You know, you have all next week. Or this week, or whatever. We want to get a chance, but I mean, well, you're stuck in traffic. If you had your books, you could read them. But yeah, like I said, I, I Ultimate Spider Man has been refreshingly good. You know, it's it's, it's good to read Spider Man, but it, it, to me, it doesn't have to have a ton of action and you know, all that stuff. You know, I'm just content that we're getting a book where he's happily, he's happy, he's not being shit on. <laughs> He's married to MJ. They have kids, and he's Spider Man. You know, he's able to you know do what he needs to do. It's and like I said, it's just so refreshing to see somebody who understands the character, the original character, not this shell of a character after one more day bullshit. Um, and getting to see uh, him interacting in a totally new world with the new and uh, and there's none of this clone bullshit. There's no clone saga, at least not yet. Um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, like I said, I, it, that's been fun with me. Uh, Feral came out. Uh, it's a new series that I'm trying out. So that's been fun. Uh, the X-Men book was sh- shockingly good. You know? Um, I was kind of leery at first, and then I didn't <clears> run in. It didn't dawn on me until after I bought it, you know, so about, about an hour ago when I went and started reading it, that it was actually, like, wait, Steve Fox, he wrote the X-Men 92, how, how, uh, how, House of X. Where they just summarized like, you know, all this, all the big events that came out of there, and made them enjoyable. Maybe because they're only five minute events, but yeah, it, it, it was fun. And like I said, they're written, they're written character, they're they're, they're drawn, same uh, art style as it is in the show. Uh, I'm just looking forward to more of that. I mean, how often do you hear me say, "Oh, I'm looking forward to another X Men book"? I really don't. The first for me, yeah. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> like I said, I like I said, I'm happy to get some back issues. Um, just happy that I can actually. This majority of the books I'm buying, I'm happy with. You know, I come in coming to run. <clears throat> it's kind of like not as uh, uh, sub, you know, up to uh, par as I want it to be. I mean, the expanse is probably the my least favorite on this whole entire thing. This one's your uh, book. 
book's been buying. Oh, and there's one book that I did uh, want to get, but I couldn't because they were damaged in transit, so they had to send them back. And that would be uh, oh. the uh, the one about the surgery, the uh, plastic uh, the plastic surgery stuff. Um, invasion. Oh, invasion. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Legend? What's up, man? We're just waiting on Zach to appear up if he's going to talk about any books. You know, he hasn't read anything yet, though. So. But at least he can show us out what he picked up. But he's stuck in traffic right now. I missed the town. <laughs> yeah, I just got rid of it today. It was kind of, I just kind of wanted to, you know, let the lip breathe for a little bit. No, I, I'd love to see you get a big pop of pump mustache and shave it. I mean, and color it the same way that he did. No, I don't. No, you don't color your goatee. You embrace, if you have gray hair, you embrace the gray hair. You don't get to touch a gray or, or what was the other one? The Just whatever your, the men's glow, hair dye club. Yeah. Creation formula. Yeah. What's up to Mark McGrath? I don't think I've seen you in a while. Where you been, bro? It's been on tour. And on tour? With Sugar A. Um, but like I said, my probably my he said for new books coming out. Uh Ghostbusters, uh, you know, the new one, back in town. Cartoonish art, but decent enough story. Uh and the league it does what it what it does. It it does cater to Ghostbusters fans. It's just that the art is just not horrendous. Like I said, it's young adult art, Tumblr art, which I don't understand why it's on this, unless they're trying to say this is Ghostbusters is now YA, but I don't know. You'd, you'd think that, you know, a quote unquote professional book or like a something like this would have standards on the art, but I guess. No. It did. When it was an IDW, I'll say that. IDW, the way they drew the art, was actually really cool. And the people and the the no the it's audience a, they're trying to get loves that stuff because that's what they came up with. So know. it's 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 no it's no big secret. No, why, yeah. Why you see so much Tumblr art now. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's 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 the way it's gonna, it's gonna be. But like I said, I can't really complain. It's been it's been five years since I've actually held a brand new Ghostbusters comic book in my hand. So I I hope that the next series or whatever they do after this, like they hope this gets enough revenue where they actually do another series and uh, in continuing with the Ghostbusters. But because I want I want to see. I want to see before or after life. I want to see what happened with Egon and the rest of the uh, guys from two from whatever was it nineteen nineteen eighty nine all the way up to like two thousand twenty one or two thousand nineteen. I want to see what they what they were doing. Like there had to been there had to been still busting ghosts. It's not like because like, like, there was it's not like they ran out of ghosts immediately after they defeated Vigo. But, but did um, they mention anything about that in the new movie? And uh, Vigo? Uh, no, no, I mean, what they were doing in between, you know. No, no. Um, base, basically, they all kind of went their separate ways. Ray's been running the uh, cult shop in the afterlife. It was, it was already talked about. They had their own stuff. Uh, uh, Zed Moore has got his own Ghostbusters uh, team. He expanded it, he's been funding it. I don't know where he got the money from, but, you know, he kind of, yeah, he's been working on He's a new Ghostbusters, like, uh, Ghost, it's called the Ghost Core, and he's been uh, doing more <coughs> research. But like I said, I wish they could actually do like I mean, this could also become the license too. As far as I know, they're, they're aiming for kids, but but I don't know. It's like I, I just wish they had more cooler art. I wish they would have actually just got Dan Shoning. Dan Shoning did the art on the IDW. It would have been perfect for this. Farrell. Even though it is cartoon, works perfectly well with this book because it just looks like a Disney book. And I say when it's this, when you put Disney, when you put horror or violence in a Disney, and it's using Disney style, that pleases me a lot because you really don't see that. No. 
It's like Pocahontas meets Homeward Bound. Yep, Outbreak of Rabies, and they talk about the end, talk about what rabies is, and, and they think a description. It, it just looks fun. You know, he give you... Yeah. Like I said, I've been fun with this. Going over here. Conan has been fun, too. I'm not a huge Conan fan, as, as far as comic books go. I, I'll have to go read some more of the original Marvel stuff. But... This has been fun. There's no uh, comic book code to, uh, you know, that they have to really have to hear to. Now, the magazines, <clears throat> I did get some, I think I got some from E. I'll have to check those out because those didn't have, the magazines, as I recall, didn't have to adhere to the code. Well, technically, Marvel and DC don't have to anymore either, but they. No, no, sure. Yeah. Like I said, this was my shocker of the of the week. I I did not expect to uh, like this. I was kind of like, oh, I was like, I was I bought. I'm like, you know, it's got decent art in the inside, and like I said I did not expect to like it as much. But man, the dialogue from Steve Fox was refreshing to see because it's Steve Fox writing it, and it has Selva Espen doing the art, who actually the those two did the Espen. 92 back, uh, series of House of X back in 2022. But, uh, yeah. It is kind of weird, though. I did notice that, too. Dazzler has red hair. She's a redhead. I think Dazzler is a blonde. She is, so she's supposed to be. And she's supposed to have long hair. Uh, no, she did have short hair. Yeah, she, cut it, she cut it all off when she joined the team. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. But overall, just been having fun with this, and then I guess a free digital offer for for sticker for Ultimate Spider-Man. Is that that saying? I can. Is it just for this book, or is it just for the? I said I'm confused about that. When they do stickers like that, because it shows the. Uh, yeah, free, don't miss on the free digital code edition of the comic that you're holding in your hands. Okay, this is just for this one. Okay. Then don't show freaking <laughs> the Spider-Man and show digital code. I was like, that's so confusing. It was it was kind of funny on my uh, at, like my local shop when they started putting a free digital stuff like that on the covers. I guess the guys <clears> were, <throat> some of the guys were, were just handing it out because saying, oh, this is free. Because they read something on the cover, and they had to put a sign on the counter saying, "Ring up the comics." Right. Well, like I said, though, that's probably the best thing about this whole entire experiment is his bond with his daughter. She's like his little sidekick. She's helped him choose this costume. She's the only one who knows that Peter's Spider Man. Uh, well, he really—I mean, he, he doesn't—he doesn't call himself Spider Man yet, yet. So they even think he have a name. But even when he's talking to Jonah. You're like, it's like, well, you know, uh, there's that guy in the black costume. He's kind of cool, isn't he? Kind of talks himself up. You kind of say he's like, you know, who it, he says, you, you actually, you, guy, he says, yeah, actually, the guy's already blown up a bunch of stuff. Robbie's taking the uh, call, in the Green Goblin's scary because he's going to this, this, this position, what's going on, because he's the inside man working at the Daily Beagle. And yeah, you know, instead they say it said he says and, uh, instead of like talking about everything that's going on there, said so they're pushing stories about the guy in the black suit, which I get he's extremely photogenic and, and to me he seems much more like a compelling and dare I say charming character, a a, ma a real man of the people. And I love their expression how they look at him. You're like really, he's like it's just opinion. So they're kind of doing kind of Peterisms, you know, what do you want to call him? And uh, it's just kind of cool seeing a new angle on that. Like I said, it just, yeah. I mean, if we do the awards for the, for comic books this year, I'll just buy them and I'll keep my, my, my uh, up there for new, uh, this exciting, or actually, actually, uh, characters that, <laughs> I probably don't know, it's, it's probably in its own category. Characters that were actually 
returned the way that, you know, as we've been written awesome again. You know, characters have been written badly are now written better again. But I don't know. Like I said there's a lot of cool books out this year. Um, if you're not reading them, you should be. So that'd it's be cool. this one and Green Lantern so far on that list. Green Lantern. Oh yeah, Green Lantern, Jeremy Adams, yes. Anything Jeremy Adams. Holy crap. Um current flash that's out this week is just garbage. Same with Power Girl. Garbage. The interior art on, on Power Girl is horrendous. It is, and it, I, I mean, whew. I um, picked up the first issue of that, then I just, I didn't after that. You know, the art was better on the original freaking two, a couple of issues. I don't know if it happened in the last issue or if it's just this issue, the art for Power Girl, it's just horrendously bad. It looks, it, it looks so, it doesn't even look Tumblr. It looks they really, it's like they, if you took a, um, a, the Barbie comic books, kind of the art that's inside there, and may, and, and you're drawing the girl, they're drawing uh, the girls, you know, Supergirl and Power Girl looking like Barbie. You know, and just this. But, but, yep, that's it for this week. Oh, and then we have Latte Zach. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? <laughs> So I ran all the way here. I just left my car on the side of the road. <laughs> I guess so. I'm just kidding. I didn't run. I'm not stupid. Well, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you, you walked. <laughs> I walked. Yeah, sure. I didn't all get right. to read anything, but that's okay. I, I, I did you get some. Books. You can still show off what you got, though. That's I'll show what I. Well, no, that's the OnlyFans. No, I called him Latte Zach because he used to be a barista. I, I did used to be a barista. I do like chocolate and coffee. That's, now, that's good stuff. Considering that barista is feminine, why do they call males baristas? Well, you, you're half right. You're half right. When I used to work at the coffee shop, me and the other guys on shift, we'd call ourselves broistas. So. See, I was going to say barista sounds kind of weird, though. Baristo, I could maybe see that because I know so it's like o, it's like uh, the uh, O is normally goes at the end of the masculine words. Yeah, Latino, Latina. Let's, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, or, 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 or here we go, Baristex. Damn it! <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Not this. I love this. Yep. The cover is really cool. Uh, Phenomenal art in there too. Uh, a really cool character pops up. From past from is it Marvel. Sonia? Is it Red Sonia? No. no. no, no. Okay. Uh, not stop off. using gendered language. Stop using caps. Stop. Stop. What's that? Uh, what's that video where they have like all the woke people together and there's this guy? Stop using gendered language. It was. It was pretty hysterical. Oh, um, uh, it, well, it was a meeting of a bunch in San of communists. Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> Meeting of a bunch of communists and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, yeah, why do you right. sound like the the kid from Handy uh, the, from South Park? That's what the dude crutches. sounded like. That's what he sounded like, though. <laughs> he legitimately sounded like that. This is the only copy that was left in my store. The guy dude. at the LCS said that he was shocked how many orders he was getting for this. Very, very good book. Um, really? My shop, my shop only had five though because main this shop was has... this. I, I think he said they had like seven or eight people that he knew of that ordered it, this was the very last one. It wasn't one of the scary movie poster homages, but that, I'm okay with it. Well, they had a bunch of the other ones, but I was like, I don't want to, I just want the main book, and I, it's it was a fun read. I enjoyed it. The art yeah. matches the cover. It's great. Good news, Vank. Yeah. Swerve got the Duke over. Take a shit up. The Duke? The Duke? Spoilers, bro. Speaking of Duke... Well, well, let's see. One of them's getting the monster title push, so hmm, let me go out on a limb and you know, predict that match. Thanks this for telling guy, me, bro. This guy no problem, looks bro. like he let off the fun. show. This is what I look like playing Helldivers for democracy. What, uh, what the white part behind there? Uh, what? That, we're trying to what? talk wrestling here. You're pointing to his crotch. Uh, what crotch? It's his head. Not him. Him. Oh, okay, I'm pointing, pointing, here. I'm pointing yeah. at rock and roll. Like the white part next to his bandage. I was like, what? No, I didn't say anything about a white 
I didn't, you said white. Well, I your, your, your finger was on that part. That's what I'm just saying. I don't know what you're pointing to. Okay, okay. Well, that, okay. Green Arrow, issue number 10. That's right. Great she's cover. Back. She's back. It's been like 13 years, but she's back. <laughs> For one issue and then gone. Don't, don't. Who don't is that? There. That is, that is Mia Dearden. She's the second Speedy. Uh, back during... Uh, Phil Hester's run. She was introduced. Kevin Smith, Phil Hester. Uh, she took Roy Harper's title of Speedy, and I actually like her more as Speedy than Roy. Um, she had she had an interesting backstory, uh, I mean, and then she went on to join like Jeff Johns' Teen Titans, and uh, then New Fifty Two came, and it was like she never existed. So, yeah, it, it is more interesting to read uh, a hot girl. Uh, drawn pretty decently, and also the fact that you have her not on drugs. No, she was a um, a human trafficking victim, though. But she didn't use it as a crutch or anything. She was like, I'm still going to be badass regardless of that. And she didn't say, my dad abandoned me. Nope. There was never did, any kind did of... Did she work for Puff Daddy, though? No, I don't know. Wait, what? No, no he's, he's going into pol- or politics and PDD track. I unfollowed a ton of political Twitter accounts today. I'm trying to narrow down my my following list. So is, I'm, is, is it I'm nice? When you, the it's it's nice when you mute like one word. I muted. Uh, I need to do that. I muted mean, Comscape, CG, and just conservative. I need to do that. <laughs> SGW. I muted I really all that. Need to do that. So, like I said, I. I Plus, I unfollowed a lot of people because I noticed that no matter what side, or some of these people, no matter what side of the political spectrum they're on, they were just engagement farming on Twitter. There's a ton of engagement farming. And it's annoying. I'm tired of clickbait stuff. This is going to be the first one that I read, though. This is the one I've been waiting for. Ultimate Spider-Man. I actually want to go and see how much... I don't think issue number three is the the night the cover that he had up. I think it's for no, issue four. Issue four. It's exclusive on his website. I know. I want to go see how much he's charging for it. Oh, it's got. I bet it's gonna be a hundred bucks. Let me see. Let me see. Hang on. Um, that was it though. I, I had no uh, you know, no back issues this week. Nothing like that. Just kind of just sticking under twenty dollars while I can. Um. It doesn't even say. There's it, no, it, oh, it, it says it, waiting list. <laughs> There's a waiting list. For it goes it. on sale on Saturday. Ah, publication date April 24, 2024. Limited to two books per order. Absolutely nothing about. There's no price on here. I saw something that went up to like two forty nine. That's insane. Yeah, you know, look, it's, 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 Jay, Jay, it's good, but I ain't spending two hundred forty dollars on he's, it. Yeah, the two. He's got two different versions. He's got the one with uh, where he's kissing Black Cat. And MJ looks at him. Is a, is a, yeah. a version of that one, and then and then the other one is basically the one he's on the couch where she Mary, 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 the couch, couch one. Yeah, yeah, that's so, the one that I would want. I think it's six oh six and six oh seven or six oh six oh eight. Yeah. Maybe, but. Hey. uh Breen, what is the name of a Speedy Gonzalez's cousin, the slow one? This is from the comments. Someone was asking him saying something about Speedy Gonzalez. Is yeah. Slowpoke Rodriguez. Slowpoke Rodriguez? Yes. Uh, but I, yeah. Uh, that's it, though. That's all I got. Like I guess when it, when it comes to as far as the prints and stuff like that, like, you know, especially big name artists and like Scott, he's got Chambl- he's got Campbell's up there. For prices and a normal like I like I just got this um the camera's all freaked out. But um can't really see it back there. But anyway, back here, how many coin poison ivy? That was forty bucks. So it was a uh eight by eleven poster. John. But um that was Don McTeague. Yeah, but um yeah. Toker from Brownside and the big homie Jeffy Morgan counter is from the burning zone. Oh. I, don't, I don't know what that means, but thank you for joining us. Hello. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's I don't have anything else either for the night. Um 
there will be another live stream going on uh, on the channel. We'll be reviewing the X Men uh, episode that came out this week. I have not seen it yet. Oh, well, neither have I. Yeah. So you got you got fifteen minutes, bro. <laughs> fifteen minutes. I'll watch it at double speed. I don't know. Does Disney do that where they allow you to speed up the view? I don't think so. And they don't allow you to speed through the stupid commercials that they're putting in there now either. Oh, I don't have the ads on Disney Plus. I have ads on um, on Hulu and on HBO Max. I have I, ads there. I have no ads because I watch everything through my PC and it skips all the ads. Nice. Prime is putting stuff in there now too. I did see several images from the new X Men um, that intrigued me. One that I'm kind of surprised that they used because it's Disney. I heard I heard a lot of people say it was actually it's actually not been bad so far. I told you, Zach, this is the one you want to get. I I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I think you're this, trolling me. So I you remember you're just waiting for me to get you, it. You, you, you read, like, oh, I got you. No, you read X Men ninety two, right? I read House of ninety two. I read yeah, House, House of ninety two. Same creator team on here. Yeah. And they're sticking to with the cartoon and everything like that. The, the same. If you like Who's the cartoon, the is it Todd Knott? The cover looks Todd like Knott does a cover, yes. Todd Knott does a cover. But the interior is uh, Salva Espen. Okay. So you're does it like look in... like. Eh, that looks a little all ages for me. Um, a little too all ages. kind of what the cartoon is, is all ages for the most part. Yeah, that's tr- uh, That's fair. That's fair. Touche. Uh, like I said, getting to see Gambit and Rogue. Yeah, it looks it looks okay. Um, when, when when I got my my twenty dollar budget though, I, I don't know that it makes the cut. No, because that's what these came in. These five came in right at under twenty bucks. I think it was like eighteen and change for these. Well, are are Rogue and uh, him Gambit still married? They weren't married in the cartoon. I don't worry. That's no, I meant in the comics. Oh, in the know. comics, I think they still are. In in the the main continuity, they still are. There was the the Mister and Mrs X series that but, was actually but, decent. But with Cook, uh, which is also, I believe, was Kelly Thompson. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I was kind of shocked um, actually. It was. Yeah, because not as good as her Black Widow, but it was. It was no, readable. No, it was. It was decent. Uh, that's a good question though, because they are rebooting the X Men again. Yeah, but um, are they keeping people married together? I mean, are they keeping Jean Grey on the team? Is this, a, is this are they relaunching from after she's resurrected when we turn out it's supposed to be Madeline Pryor? Or what, what are they doing here with this new series? Or, or are they just going to do what they did with this one and just kind of keep the same roster and just pretend nothing happened? <laughs> is it? Um... Looking to see. Apparently, they were having marital problems. I mean, this is from last year. There's nothing from 2024. Oh, well, you're talking about the Rogue and Gambit series by Stephanie Phillips. They were kind of Stephanie having, Phillips, yeah. They were, yeah, it was kind of thing. They're kind of having a little bit. Were they throwing drama issues. in there? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's because they have to. It's, you know, teen angst and all stuff. Right, right. Uh, and then Rogue and her two moms. Telling her, telling, uh, telling her, oh, you shouldn't be with Gambit. He's he's not reliable. And I'm just like, Wolverine just cut her, like he did in, in the freaking. <laughs> well, um, I'm, I'm guessing they probably wanted her to start dating girls. They probably wanted her to be black. They probably wanted to date. No, no, no. I'm talking about the characters in the comic. You know, uh, Destiny and and then the other one, which I can't remember her name. Misty. Yeah, well, because all she is now is gay. There's no no other character traits now, but yeah. But <clears throat> but that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the stream tonight. I'm gonna be wrapping up in a few minutes here. So if you guys uh, had fun, please you can like, please like, click like, subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, we do a lot of readings on this channel. There's a lot scheduled. <laughs> um. There's uh, two readings scheduled for tomorrow, but they're, uh, these will be pre-recorded from the vault. Stuff that uh, Puppetine never even made. Okay, public. Walt Disney. From well, the they're, vault. They are. They're from the vault in 2021. Is that whatever release. Really say from the vault? Remember from the vault used to mean like from 20 or 30 years ago. Well, these have been locked away. 
I finally had access to these now. So you walked away to protect the public. Now we're gonna <laughs> protect the IPs <laughs> to, to protect publics. Where ah, uh, where shopping is a pleasure. Yeah, or so they say. Uh, Rhaegar, you're obsessed with Diddy, man. Quit bringing up. A... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, Diddy, <laughs> or Diddy, not. <laughs> But Let me I, tell you, all the people in the world that I hate, I, I'm sick of hearing about today, Diddy's is near the top of the list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can do picture in picture in here, apparently. That was weird. Don't put a picture of them. I don't want to no, see No, 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 no. I clicked on the streamer and it did a picture, a picture. It popped out the picture. Streamer has, now has it. I can pop out the corner of my, my video, what I'm watching, the corner, mm -hmm. and I can go browse do what I want to do. It's so weird for StreamYard. But I guess it's for, I guess... It has some some function, but anyway, though um, yeah, this this is entertaining. So this video guy gets a pitch thrown behind him. So the next pitch, he bunts down the first base line. The pitcher comes to field it. He just body checks him instead of running to first. Just crushes the pitcher. Oh yeah, and gets tackled by the first baseman before he can get there. And a brawl ensues. Isn't it's not an older one? It's not a new one. Yeah, it's nineteen seventy four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna yeah, say, I, yeah, so this is just, that's awesome. I saw, I saw that about about a month ago. I shared that with our group. You Lenny know. Randall. Yeah, that was awesome. When I see something like that in baseball, you can fight. Um, the last one I saw, the guy hit himself in the face with the ball. It, it hit hit his bat. It foul balled off. His, oh his yeah, bat. that 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 black oh. guy and it like so, shattered uh, shattered his uh, eye eye socket. Yeah, I don't know if he's really? black. That, but I mean, I just remember it's, 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 it goes up and it's like, oh, he went right into his face. But, um, yeah, that hurts. Uh, we do have, like I said, the only live reading we're going to have this week is actually live. Where us being here, we're actually reading is going to be on Saturday night, 7 15 p.m. Central, 8 uh, 30 p.m. Central for the second one. So, a lot of cool stuff going to be, uh, happening up in the next couple days. So, keep an eye out. And if for those who don't celebrate Easter, <laughs> Uh, there will be two readings being uploaded on that day. For all you heathens out there, <laughs> we don't celebrate Easter. As long as you worship the rabbits. Oh. <laughs> so, this, may have been a bad, this may have been a bad time for me to uh, quote Paradise Lost. Then. I know. For those of you who, who uh, celebrate Easter by watching Critters 2, we salute you. <laughs> it makes me. Wanna, you ever see uh, Home Improvement when they do Tool Time? It's like this week is our salute to whatever they're saluting. Yeah. All right. So that reminded me. Of. But that's it for our show. We thank you for jo joining in and uh, sing us out, Breen. Do the outro. Oh, pass. Oh, pass. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Be live in 15 more minutes. Woohoo!